What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? back with One Piece Greatness. Oda is on such a hot streak, I don't even want to go back to Egghead. Although that is probably what's going to happen in 1082. 1081 was a layup as far as like this was going to be more Garp content. But the way that everything ends here, Oda can safely move back to Egghead. Maybe we'd get some cross guild. Um, hey, look, I, like I said, I don't want to go back to Egghead, but we will. We'll talk about that later. Thank you so much for all of the W's, Oda. Even one going as far back as the Laws and Sword Big Sword Theory. You know, we know that Law became a warlord by giving the government a hundred hearts. Okay? I think that the Rocky Port incident was where Law was able to get those hearts. Another one. I have said this so much that it became headcanon. There were people in the stream saying, wait, that wasn't mentioned? No, that has never been mentioned until right now by Blackbeard. It is confirmed that the Rocky Port incident and Law becoming a warlord are tied together, which fuels so many of the theories, especially going to the Rocky Port theory that I put out a couple of months ago. Essentially tying everything with Wang Zhu, aka Wang Shi, into a gigantic plan to have Law become a warlord in the first place, considering that the real Wang Zhi in real life was a actual warlord in real life. He worked for the government taking down pirates, which brought up the interesting conversation of is Wang Zhi now actually the man marked by flames? Because if the real life Wang Zhi was, you know, working for the government and Shiryu is saying that you know, the person that has the last Poneglyph also is government affiliated. Does that track? Hmm, I don't know. I'm still leaning towards Saul, but we'll get more into that as well. Also, the biggest W for me right now, and the biggest W for all of us, is that Kuzan is here on Hachi Nosu. We talked about the two sides of everything. There was a lot of, uh, you know, meat. If Kuzan was going to go to Egghead, O'Hara, Robin, Saul, I felt it was too early. I said, with everything in the story, tying Garp to Kuzan, it only makes sense that we have Kuzan here on Hachinosu. I said, I didn't buy it. I said, I need him here. This is what the story needs. Even if Blackbeard shows up at the end, Garp versus Kuzan. Thank you, Oda. But then if we actually had Kuzan here, then it's Sword, it's Garp, it's Snape versus Dumbledore. You know, it's a situation where Kuzan's gotta play his role to a T. So Kuzan may be a little more tactful in the way that he goes about dealing with Garp here. Full of lead, Garp arrives. Kuzan's gotta make it look good. Kuzan and Garp fight. Smooth transition into who's coming to Egghead. Lafitte, potentially Kuzan, although I'm not entirely convinced that he's not still on full of lead. You know, I could see him making a grand entrance and being the one person that actually can stop Garp. Another one. Let's dissect, let's dive deep, let's go. But first, like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. Why Kuzan on Hachinosu versus Kuzan on Egghead? A lot of people wanted the Egghead stuff. Like we talked about it, Robin, O'Hara, 
Saul, everything like that. Juicy stuff. But Kuzan has always been tied to Garp. Go back to chapter zero. He's following him around like a puppy dog. I've been saying this dude was his apprentice this whole time. Kuzan confirmed that in this chapter. The moment that we met Kuzan, he was already, you know, when he met him as Aokiji, right? He was already talking about Garp. He's the first person who clued us in that, you know, Luffy had a grandfather. Most people that are born do, but we didn't know that here. And we certainly didn't know that he was Garp at the time. But when we did find out that it was Garp, Kuzan was also there, hanging out on Garp's ship at the end of post Senny's lobby. So there's always been this. What I want out of this situation is a Snape versus Dumbledore. Kuzan is deep, deep, deep undercover. He is in communication with Garp. This is all a plan to make sure that whatever Blackbeard is doing now doesn't echo what he did in the pre-time skip. A massive war, everything like that. And Kobe being at the center of this the person who is really supposed to inherit this change that will come at the end of this story, we gotta save him. Garp says to Kuzan, stop wavering. It's a sign of weakness, which could be read as make this look good. Do not go easy on me. We are putting on a show here for everyone because the only two people that know that your sword are me and you. If Kuzan is able to weaken Garp to a point where Blackbeard finishes him off, then Kuzan has to wrestle with the fact that he is responsible for his mentor's death. And there is some really juicy stuff that we can get out of that and set up this redemption arc for Kuzan, where, yeah, he let Garp die or something happened to Garp or anything like that. Kobe's getting away no matter what. But... Later down the line, there may be a situation where Kuzan has to choose between the role that he's playing, which I still believe is Sword, and maybe Robin, and that's when he'll draw that line and he'll step up to Blackbeard. And this echoes what happened at Marineford with Ace. Garp couldn't save Ace because it would have opened the position of everyone learning that he was actually friendly with Gold Roger and actually raised this kid. So... Here, it's kind of the same situation, where it is duty over what might even be the right thing. The long game. This is not about the now, this is about what's to come. We got some Kuzan lore. He also low-diffed a bunch of <laughs> Blackbeard pirates, you know, a year ago. You can see uh, San Juan Wolf. There's a shot of Pizarro and Vasco shot getting completely frozen as well. And they're not doing the Doflamingo Garp move of breaking out of the ice either. So, I mean, I'm not a power scaler, but, you know, let's power scale, right? Does that put Dofi above a lot of these Blackbeard pirates? Probably. Which is actually good news for some of our crew, because I wouldn't put some of our crew above Doflamingo either. Finally see Lafitte after a very long time of not having Lafitte in the story, but, you know, there's a possibility we'll see him in 1082. But man, is Lafitte shysty. He's talking to the boy Marshall within earshot of Kuzan, saying, Hey, Commodore, you wanna, you wanna take this guy out? Let's get his fruit. <laughs> Lafitte is a top tier. This is why I have him as Sanji's opponent. Okay. If he's able to talk like that in front of Kuzan, he has to be at a certain level. I'm, I'm sorry. I really like Lafitte. He's probably my favorite Blackbeard Pirate member. Lafitte also drops the lore, which we might as well just accept as canon, that the Road Poneglyph is not on Elbaf, it is not on Sphinx, it is not under the sea. It is on a ship, a black ship that is driving around, and if you get anywhere near it, whirlpools. Okay, there are a lot of contenders to talk about here, and my top option, even though I will get into some alternates, is still Saul. It just, you're, you're bringing Saul back into the story, you're having Shiryu say that they're government affiliated, which Saul was a vice admiral in the Marines as well, you have Zunisha, right, that is constantly moving, and that was a way to protect the Rhodoponoglyph, and nobody has 
Zoe's Ponoglyph, really, because of this particular move also. So if the idea is that the Grand Line and the New World is so hard to traverse, that if we just stay on a ship and we're constantly moving, then the only way you're ever going to get to that Ponoglyph is if you have a Viver card of the person who's manning the ship. And if that is something that Saul took upon himself after reading everything at O'Hara, after talking to Vegapunk, and maybe Vegapunk is the person that actually does have that Viver card. Maybe, because he also knew Vegapunk, he got some sort of a devil fruit or some sort of a technology that is attached to the ship as well that is also causing the whirlpools or maybe he's got some of you know vegapunk's technology those little sharks and things like that that are creating whirlpools and eddies and things like that and that's what's protecting the ship so saul is still my top choice but we talked about it at the beginning of the video wang Zhu is I guess a potential possibility. I would prefer that he's dead. But for more on, you know, what Wangzhi is or anything like that, the Rocky Port video is on the channel and I go into exactly what the history of the real life Wangzhi was and how that can tie into things. Some people were mentioning Scopper, which I actually think is a pretty interesting idea. He's not government affiliated, but it would have this fun you know, just sort of bookend to everything because we started our journey by meeting Crocus, who is the doctor, you know, then in the halfway point, we meet Rayleigh, who is the right hand. Then in order to actually get to Laugh Tale, we have to deal with the left hand of Roger. There's some poetry to that. And, you know, if we have to have somebody new in the story, which my idea is, let's get somebody that's already been introduced to the story. Let's platform a character that's been gone that's why i love the idea of it still being saul but scopper is a fun idea like out of all of the scopper ideas that have ever scoppered this is the most proper scopper people in the chat were bringing up that parvision has a theory that it could be davy jones which of course i have been waiting for davy jones to you know come into the story since long ring long land if this is oda's way to tie him in then that's kind of fun although there is a little bit of a plot hole here in that the Poneglyph, if it's on the ship, and Davy Jones or maybe even Vanderdecken, because you go back to Fishman Island and learn about the original Vanderdecken was cursed to, you know, be on the sea and the ship and everything, and it lines up with what Lafitte is talking about here, and if that's actually Davy Jones, how did they get down to Fishman Island to get the Poneglyph, which you know, would have been there you know, as early as 24 years ago, was Vanderdeck in the ninth a part of that? Did he slap the Poneglyph and then he sent it to his ancestor? I don't know. We're that's that's kind of wacky. I don't know about that. I don't think it's Davy Jones. I don't think it's Vanderdeck. It could also be someone that's close to the you know Ryugu Kingdom as well, because they would know that it was there. They would know the importance of it. But it's hard trying to figure out which Fishman character would do that. You know. <laughs> It's what Fishman character has enough story relevance to do something like that. Fisher Tiger is dead. Namor from the Whitebeard Pirates, you know, didn't amount to much and shouldn't be the character here. It means that we're getting a new character and I don't know, that, I don't know, but we did see the Arlong Pirates create whirlpools during the, you know, Arlong arc. Kurobi and Chu, they go in the go up to Pudding Pudding's uh, ship and, you know, take away the rudder and all that by creating whirlpools. So there is a Fishman tie there. Some people were bringing up Dragon. I do not like that idea at all because it creates the plot hole of why did Robin never know about Road Poneglyphs when we were at Zoe? Why was that the first time that she was learning about this if she had already seen one with Dragon? Nope. Not, not, even, not even approaching that. It's not Dragon. If Hibari is actually a Kainu's daughter, then Kuzan attacking her is one of the pettiest things in the <laughs> the entire story. And uh, I'm here for it. Even though I did really like Hibari's showing in 1080, uh, it was a great way to get attached to this character that was just introduced, you know, essentially five seconds ago as far as the story is concerned. 
So that's that's fun. And it was, I don't know, the way Oda draws people getting frozen in ice by Kuzan is horrifying. You know what I mean? Like even going back to when Robin got iced in Long Ring Longland, it's very visceral. Bari will be fine, but it's still, it's good stuff. We were so close, so close. We were on the verge of greatness. We were about to get Law on Hachidosu. Blackbeard was gonna take him back with him and present him to the people who he stole all of those hearts. And that is really interesting to know that all of the pirates that we're seeing run around that are getting, you know, <laughs> galaxy uh, impacted by garb are likely people that do not have a heart. But if he gave those hearts to the world government, why didn't the world government do anything with those hearts that would impact those people? So that's kind of a little bit of a, you know, plot hole there. But Beppo did something. Oh my god. Wow, I have been one of the most notorious Beppo slanderers because he just, you know, he pops up every so often to just go, aye aye, Captain, and just never does anything. And then he gets his gangster guest, you know, flashback, and now he's gonna go Sue Long and Chopper gets a W off screen. I, I don't know. But as always, we will continue the Beppo slander. Beppo is supposed to be the second in command and has still done nothing. Now, some people want to see Beppo go Sulong, long but if Beppo is proficient in Sulong, long then where was that in Wano? At any time, you could have looked in, into the moon and helped and didn't? It took this moment to take a drug given to you by someone that... Would, is there even a scene between Beppo and, and Chopper in the entire series? <laughs> the, the two pets of these, you know, uh, famed pirate crews, but the only way we get around this is, and also considering that we haven't seen Chopper use a rumble ball since Onigashima also, did Chopper experiment off screen with the mink medicine? And then mixing that is creating an even more potent rumble ball than what he already had going on with everything that Caesar kind of gave him to extend the lifespan of Rumble Ball's effects, 30 minutes, etc. What does it say that Chopper is able, with his Rumble Ball, to harness moon energy and trigger this Su Long transformation? Like, Chopper is not a mink. Or is he? Is he the Hito Hito no Mi model mink? And he was never really human at all. I mean, he's still the human human fruit, but is his model mink and that the experiments that he was already doing on himself is what's able to trigger this in Beppo. What happens if Luffy eats a Rumble Ball? We've been talking about this ever since we learned he was a Zoan. At this point, I'm convinced that it would just trigger Gear 5, which then ties back into my big Tamate Bako theory, whereas did Chopper, pre-time skip Chopper, <laughs> without any knowledge of the tomate pills, essentially in Wapple's castle, create the tomate pills that sent Hody into, you know, his rage. Now, the problem with that is that Chopper's never gone full white. He's never had red eyes. And the problem with knowing the different effects here is that Beppo is already covered in white fur, so I need to see what it would do to, like, uh, you know, a mink like Shashilian or Bibi, right? That aren't already all white with red eyes. Like, would they retain their natural fur color at that point, like Chopper does? These are, these are the questions that I now need answered because this is kind of breaking some rules here. And of course, moonlight is just reflected sunlight. So is he somehow harnessing the power of the sun as well in the palm of his hands? Chopper. Wow. Proper chopper. Also, something to note, Beppo managed to land a hit on a guy who could teleport. Oda. 
You're just you're just breaking the gears, man. You're breaking the machine. You're breaking the machine. So what's Law's fate? Obviously, he's going to survive to live another day, and apparently Jean Bart and everybody else that's floating to the bottom of the sea, they'll be okay too. But what I would actually really love is if this is the way that Oda can shoehorn Drake into everything. Because Drake is not playing a role at Hachinosu, but what if he's on his way to Hachinosu and he finds Beppo and Drake starts to heal Law and then we tie everything together with Sword? I don't know. I just need Law at Hachinosu. <laughs> but considering how much the story has tied Drake and Law together, regardless of any of the Laws and Sword theories or agendas, the same way that the story tied Kuzan and Garp together, this is a way of wrapping up that storyline if Oda wants to, you know, actually have some closure as we're going into the final saga. And it would be a good callback to the flashback where Drake inadvertently saved Law as well by just getting, you know, intercepted by Sudu. It would be fun for them to have that conversation as well. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, 1082 is going to be going back to Egghead. Uh, we haven't seen Luffy and the crew for a month. Uh, we're on break again because of Golden Week. We'll do a theory for theory. I don't. We just had the Law Summit, which was a lot of fun. I don't know if I'll do another group event, but this, you know, this chapter almost does warrant it. Maybe we'll just go back to the one-on-one -on -one platform with theory for theory. Zoro is looking for S Hawk. I'm expecting S Hawk to appear down below where Chopper, Robin, and Atlas are, but I'm hoping that they actually make it to York beforehand. And I want Zoro to get lost and end up in the paw room with Bonnie because he is narratively tied to Kuma. He's narratively tied to Bonnie. Let's have that situation come to a head. Maybe he has to protect Bonnie. We also last saw the Marines were closing in. Will they finally land? But it seems like Blackbeard's crew is ahead of the Marines. So we need to see who's on those logs. We already know pretty much two people that are on there. I'm still expecting maybe Moria is actually going to Egghead and is not on Hachinosu because otherwise, why would you continue to drag this out? He set up that he was captured in a, a, a cell there, but then you never show Kobe go there. In, we haven't seen Perona again. What is going on here? Will this tie to the Cross Guild? If Moria is on Hachinosu, gets away with Perona, they go to Mihawk. Does Moria become a member of the Cross Guild? I'm okay with that. My favorite thing for 1082 would be Cross Guild, but who knows? Come on, Oda. Let's catch up with all the Yonko. And that's gonna wrap things up, guys. Thank you to everybody that supports the channel. All of our members, we're up to 232 members. We do get a new emoji at 250. That's the goal. Now, as far as our new and returning members, they are Puck the Pirate, Nico, the boy Kev Dog, Kev Dog, Samuel Owusu, Aim PDX, The Will of Dreams, Haven King, Jay Chizemp, Nico Pinks. Carlos Diaz, Court Press 87, Lord Vegeta, Pirate King Season, Ronnie Williams, Carmelo Smith, Nasty Ninja 808, Zote, Anthony 598, Palm Primus, Kevin Abwau, DJ Red Comet 369, Emmanuel Blue, Nighthawk, Antika Wijaya, Micah Starness, Brian Field, Sheesh. Groovy Zeno, TV in the Attic, Alonzo Stevens, Birth, ZMP 323, Victoriana, Zigzag, Loggy Doggy, Skylar H, Tug, First Class 23, Ghost X, DJ Longmire, Juan Carlos, Sean McDonough, Hamad, Yoda the Tweed, Spicy Kimchi, Nicer, Priyanshu Shukla, Tage Graham, Matt W, Unknown Kreesh, JDB, Steve Augustine, Patrick Flannery, Sway Shocks, 
Jeremy Stadler, Rickard, my guy Dax Sake, Chief D. Hater, Free Wari 4, David Cott, Adhafera Black, Toby, Totally Not Sid, Me Macho, Law is Sauce McGee, Cinder Spawn, Austin F., and Firefox. Shout out to all of you guys. We will have a collab this coming weekend, likely at our usual time on Sundays, unless the guest, you know, needs to switch things around. Look out for community posts, the Discord, Twitter, all of that. So I'll see you there. But first, like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. I'll catch you later. Swimming deep, deep, savage. savage.